I suppose it's true in most parts of the world, but certainly here in the United States, we have a special place in our hearts for great orators. And that's why we are here today in front of this statue, this monument to Daniel Webster. Hey everybody, welcome to Real United States and welcome to downtown Washington DC again on this series we're doing on some of the statuary and monuments here in Washington DC. Now, you probably noticed over the last couple of months, Beverly and I have been doing a lot of these big bronze statues, these monuments, and during the winter months, it's been easier for us to get at these and do them when there's parking places and whatnot so we could get in here and do them. Um, it may seem like we've done a lot of them, but actually we've probably done less than a dozen at this point. And uh, after doing some research, we turned out that there are, are in excess of 130 of these in DC. So we may be at this a while, but don't worry. We're gonna intersperse them between other episodes. And I just wanted to let you know about that. But eventually we will build a library of all of these monuments and all that you may not get to see, even if you come here on an extended vacation to DC, that you may not have time or opportunity to see, so we wanted to be able to share them with everybody. Anyway. Webster was one of the greatest orators here in the United States in our history. A little bit of background about him. He was, of course, a politician. He was twice the United States House of Representatives representative from the great state of New Hampshire. He then ran and was elected to the United States Senate from New Hampshire. And then later to the United States Senate, he was a representative for the state of Massachusetts. At least twice or perhaps three times, he was appointed as Secretary of State. So a hugely important role. He's probably best known for his passionate arguments to try and maintain the unity of the nation prior to the Civil War in the 1840s. And while people's opinions vary on this, some claiming he was a horrible person because he was trying to maintain slavery, other people saying he was a great person because he was trying to maintain the unity of the nation, at any rate, certainly known as one of our greatest orators. Now, Webster also was immortalized in literature. For those of you who don't know Webster as a great orator, perhaps you know him from the 1936 short story, The Devil and Daniel Webster, written by Stephen Benet. Now, in this particular work, Webster is called upon as an attorney, which he was prior to his career in the Senate and the, and the House to defend a person who had made a Faustian deal with the devil. He had sold his soul in return for so many years of prosperity, and at the end of this, he wanted out of it. Well, as it turns out, he actually called upon Webster to defend him against the devil, and the devil agreed, but the jury had to be picked by the devil, and of course, it was stacked against Webster, and through the course of the story, you discover that the devil isn't there for the gentleman he's made the deal with. He's there for Webster. Well, through a long and impassioned speech that transpires in the book, Webster manages to evoke this emotion from this jury of the damned to actually sympathize with him and find that the soul of the individual is not the property of the devil. Anyway, it was also later made into a movie and was very, very popular through the mid part of the 20th century. So this tells you a little bit about how Webster really was, you know, so important that he actually found his way into, into, into popular fiction in the mid 20th century. Now Webster, of course, died in 1852. However, about a century, a little more than a century after his death, in 1957, a Senate committee, committee chaired by then Senator John F. Kennedy, nominated, voted, whatever, found Webster as one of the five greatest senators, one of their five greatest of their predecessors in the history of the United States at that point.
uh, along with Robert Taft, who we'll probably do an episode on here in the not too distant future. But a fairly significant honor to be one of the five greatest senators in American history. And so in the beginning of the 20th century, this statue was gifted by an individual. And like so many of these statues, again, it's hard to tell, but that statue is about one and a half times life size. So all of these figures in DC, or a lot of them, are made much larger than life. And that's largely because of the fact that they're relatively far from your point of view, your perspective. So to, the artist has gone to the trouble of making them scaled so from where you're standing they look life size. There's a beautiful relief here on the front side and the back side of the stone base. And in this case, it's Webster arguing in front of the United States Congress I don't know exactly which famous scene this is, but I'm pretty sure this is one of his arguments in the trying to preserve the unity of the nation. And of course, his birth dates and death dates and all those sorts of things inscribed on this beautiful granite base around here. And this is one of the monuments just outside of Scott Circle that we're gonna be doing here very soon in downtown Washington, D.C. And we are just, oh, I don't know, maybe four or five blocks straight north of the White House here in D.C. Anyway, it's a beautiful statue. You can see he has a fat book in his hand resting on a column next to him. Rather stern looking fellow, but certainly a great orator, a great speaker. So I'd like to thank you for joining us here on The Real United States. I hope you've enjoyed this visit to the Daniel Webster Memorial in downtown Washington, D.C. Hey, if you got questions or comments, leave in the comments section below. I love hearing from everybody. I try to get back to everybody I can. If you're new here, hey, pick subscribe, come along for the adventure. We love having everybody with us. And as always, thank you for watching.